All right, guys, I'm going to show you all four of my Bonds binders. And I'm going to try to do another PC showcase of the entire Bonds PC. It's been over a year since I've done this. And I've made a lot, I say a whole heap of additional purchases. So I figured I'd show you guys how my collection is progressing. And I'm going to try not to talk too much in these videos because I'm just going to try to show you all the cards. One thing I can tell you is every single card in all these binders are unique. Not a single duplicate. So if you got any questions on that, just comment down below. And hopefully you guys will appreciate seeing this collection. So I have four binders I got to flip through real quick. And each binder has between, well, the first three have like 70 pages each, and then the last one's around 50. So this probably will take a while to do. Guess we will not know until the video is all done. Love those minis. Love how they look with the tobacco card inserts. This binder here is primarily parallels or maybe different brands within a company that use the same photograph or like preview cards and stuff like that where the cards look the same that's why there's a lot that look like they might be doubles but trust me they are not Love this collection. Been working on it. Been really been working, collecting bonds pretty hardcore since like 1998. Love all those Pacific parallels you see in here. Man, they just made so many darn parallels. Hard to keep track of them all, but you collect over a long period of time, you'll you'll become familiar with them if uh, one of the guys you collect is in those old Pacific sets. And look at that shine. All right, that's it for binder one. And here we go with binder number two. This one won't have as many parallels in it. Mostly unique looking cards. If I do have parallels in any of this, these cards, they'll be higher end cards and they'll be in my top loaded and magnetic box. I'm trying to center it. I don't really put the cards by any year or anything like that. Not even so much by brand. I mean, sometimes I try to put some of the brands together because it helps me keep track. But my organization is not the best considering how many cards I have of this guy. However, I kind of have developed a unique system over the years. I'd say most of the majority of the cards in this binder are like $20 or less. And the majority of the cards that I put in top loaders and magnetics are like 20 bucks or more. So that's kind of the threshold that I use. Doesn't always work out that way, but it's kind of the, uh, oh, the, uh, Criteria I try to use. I don't know why it took me so long to figure out what word to say, but I figured I got time So I got a whole binder here to show you guys Here's all the score And some of those newer score products are beautiful Not so new now, but new compared to the like junk era stuff There's a bunch of Pacific stuff where I don't have parallels at least parallels that are uh, not in the boxes.
thick cards in that one. But as you guys can see, there is a big old variety of cards of this guy, Mr. Barry Bonds. All the companies made cards of him and all the sets and all the insert sets, so just kind of add it up, especially like during the 90s. Hopefully I'm keeping this camera still. I'm trying to flip these pages and hold the camera. So that's binder two. Here we go, binder three. And I'll repeat, not a single card that you've seen so far in all these binders is a duplicate. All unique. These all have different, like, borders. A lot of people don't realize, but some of those old Donruss cards, the borders are, are different. But Beckett doesn't have any... They don't identify them as being a different card, so you just have to know know the product to know which ones have different borders. But it makes it fun for collecting junk era stuff. There's always something new to find with those types of cards. If anybody makes it to the end of this video, you are a true baseball card junkie. Turn the binder the other way for these cards. These are all the, uh, the ones that are horizontal compared to the, the standard vertical look. I'm like covering those cards on that top right page. No real other comfortable way to do this fast though, so trying to do this fast and not ruin the cards at the same time. But you get the gist of it. I'll probably put this video on my uh, group that I do, the Barry Bonds Collectors Group on Facebook as well. People might be interested in my collection. This is just the binder portion of it. So there's the puzzle. This is my last binder. A bunch of tech cards. These are 98s and 99s. Still have a lot of those to pick up. And 2000s. There weren't that many 2000s. There were only like 20 of them. Love that set. That's a 10 card set of Barry. There's a home run set. Bunch of food issue cards there. Uh, stadium food issue cards, that is. All the star sets. That company was around, what, from the mid 80s all the way up until the early 90s. Famous for the Michael Jordan. True rookie card, I guess you could call it. There's a Barry Cola set. Then a bunch of college cards. Then a bunch of unlicensed stuff. Kind of put it all together. Food issues, unlicensed food issues. And then these are Panini stickers from the 90s. And then we got the discs, the King Bee discs. A bunch of other just oddball. These are stickers with other players on the back. Then uh, dual player cards with Barry. Love those four and one cards there. And just a bunch of multiplayer cards with Barry. And then these are newspaper cutouts from his record, single season record. 
breaking season. So there we go, guys. There's a quick overview on my binders. Comment down below and let me know what you think.